Yo, Chief Architect user, let's do an arched open-faced wall cabinet. Uh, if you want to know how to do an arched full height cabinet with glass doors and pull out drawers, the whole nine, there's a video, should pop up right now. And otherwise you can scroll down through the description, past the description, I think there'll be a link to that video. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use a cabinet uh, countertop for this. And just to point this out, at the bottom of the screen, we can see the positive and uh, positive Y and X legs here. Uh, those legs indicate positive values. So if we draw up and if we draw to the right, those are both in positive directions. So as I'm drawing this countertop, I can draw up and right and then hit tab or enter. And so long as polar is not checked, we can enter our coordinates. So in this case, I'm gonna make this, um, I'm gonna end up making something that, let's say it's 12 inches wide, but I'm gonna subtract three quarters of an inch from the side. And then let's make this 30 inches tall, but I'm gonna subtract an inch and a half, which is three quarters times two. So let me just press okay from there. And there we go. From here, hold my F key. I'm gonna fill it this little guy, and then I'm gonna copy paste, reflect about, and union. There we go. This is gonna become the back of my cabinet. In fact, this is gonna become my entire cabinet, almost. So let me open this up and I'm gonna set the thickness of this to be the back panel thickness of my cabinet. So in this case, it's gonna be three quarters of an inch. And then for moldings, let's add a new molding. In the case that you're in X14 and prior, this is gonna be called CA-001 in X15 and on. This is just gonna become BM01 as in base molding. 01 or Bravo Michael. Bravo Michael. Bravo Michael. <laughs> Bravo Michael. I hope you're watching this if your name's Michael. <laughs> Anyways, from here, we can see that we've got that offsets establishing that um, three quarters on either side, so long as we set the width of the profile to three quarters of an inch. So this is now going to be that overall that I need it to be in terms of width and height. So then the height definition here, I'm gonna make this height be the um, overall depth of my cabinet. So I'm gonna make one that's 13 and a quarter deep, all right? And there we go. So from here, let's just press okay. I do wanna simplify the polyline right here. And the reason for that, let's just take a look in 3D. Reason for that is if we just apply a material on here so we can see the orientation, you're gonna notice this is all diagonal. If we click on this and simplify the polyline, watch what happens. It's gonna straighten that out for me. So that's what I wanna do before I end up converting this to a symbol. So now we can go ahead and convert selected to symbol. We wanna make sure that this is a cabinet door, drawer, symbol category, and let's Check, show advanced options, press OK. From here, we need to get into our 3D panel. Let's go ahead and name this something like arched cabinet door. And then I like to put in parentheses that this is in fact a cabinet door because sometimes I name things and their true self isn't really identified in the name. So the next part is, let's take a look at this. You can see the gizmo here is pointing us to our positive X, Y, Z values. And we can see that the X direction here, we wanna revolve this object around X. So we need to pick this up around X. So we're gonna check X as the axis and then let's rotate this. There we go. Now the trick to replacing a back of a cabinet is that the face that you want to face forward needs to face the positive value of y. So here's the positive value of y. So we are facing the correct way. So even though this drew as if it was upside down, that's actually the easiest way to do it. So that's why I like to use that countertop tool. The only next thing I need to do is I need to offset this because this is seen as a cabinet door. It's gonna place from the, um, from the uh, front face here. So I need to actually offset this in the y position the total distance of the geometry itself. So 13.25, now you can see the gizmo is pointing to the very back end of this. Now, up here, I wanna turn on show bounding box because I'm gonna do a few modifications. I need this 
cabinet door to be seen as three quarters of an inch smaller than it is for this particular trick. So I want to get into advanced sizing and then let's take a look at our left right spacing here. So 3D geometry dimensions, let's uncheck this. Once we do, this is going to become checked. We're going to uncheck this because we don't want to edit the geometry. We only want to edit the bounding box spacing. See now the bounding box is perfectly aligned with the bounds of the geometry. So now I want to add some or subtract rather some spacing, negative three quarters. And then we're going to do that on the top and bottom as well. Negative three quarters, negative three quarters. Now take a look at this. Notice that it's just inside. It's basically that slab center of our countertop material. That bounding box is shrunk into that size. That's perfect. Last thing we need to do is get to that 2D block. Let's regenerate that block to get an appropriate block out of this and press OK. Now we could place this, but we don't need to. We can just back out of that real quick. I'm going to place instead, I'm going to place a wall cabinet and I'm going to actually bring this off the wall. It's a little bit easier to deal with when it's off the wall. And then let me space this out. I'm going to add, when I check polar here, that 1.25 to make this 13.25 overall. And now let's open this up and prep this to receive our setup here. So let me open this up. I'm going to make sure that in the molding section, we remove any kind of molding. In the box construction, we want to make sure that this has no top, it has no bottom, and it's framed and the separations are set to zero. That's going to remove any kind of styles and rails. Then in front sides back, we're going to get to that left side, set it to none. We're going to get to that right side, set it to none. And then in our front side, we'll do something a little bit trickier. Let's go ahead and remove this blank area because that's going to show up and we don't want it to. Um, if you have one, this is just in my templates. And then in the door auto right, let me go ahead and set this to opening. And then I'm going to set a couple things up here. I'm going to set up a couple of different shelves. So I'm going to set this to manual. Two shelves is fine. Spacing from previous. I'm going to narrow this down to eight inches. And then let me go ahead and pick from the library some little item here. So I'm going to search in my library. I have some pinned shelves. So I'm going to add a couple pinned shelves here. Can be kind of generic. They're going to be exactly the same. I could trade them out. You might see that in the uh, in the YouTube cover art. Who knows? And let me press OK. That's what it shows up as. Now all I need to do is press OK. This is our new cabinet. Now notice it does have something on the back here. I actually forgot one step. Let's get to that back side face, and we need to set this to a custom face. And the blank area we need to set to be a door panel. Now, once this is a door panel, Chief sees this as a cabinet door. And what did we just create? We just create an arched cabinet door. So we can hover over this and click to replace. And there we go. We've replaced that whole back side of this thing. It's perfect now. Now I get to just do stuff like pick some materials that I might want to apply to this. I'm going to do that with some cedar material I've got here. And then maybe an oak material that I've got here as well. And something that's cool that we could do with this is we can even take this opening and split it vertically if we want to resize some things. And because everything's set to zero inch framing, we need to actually pick up our separation and then at the bottom set this to whatever we need it to be. So in this case, I'm going to make it three quarters of an inch. Once I do that, it does create a separation that's three quarters of an inch. That locks that separation and I can equalize these both opening sides. And then maybe I change the millwork. But the last kind of simple piece here is that we're going to paint this up and down. Now, one thing about this box replacement that this is showing up is that we actually needed to offset in the Z for this to look correctly. So it could be that I go open this up back from my library, which is simple enough. And from the library itself, all we need to do is in the Z position, knock this up three quarters of an inch. And so when we replace this again, oh, actually it's down three quarters of an inch negative three quarters of an inch and replace this again there we go now this is proper positioning and i can pick up that cedar texture again to do a little bit of rework in here i 
and take a look at that. Isn't that cool? Do a little ray trace, do a little cover art from here. Very cool. Hopefully you learned something from that. Cheers.